Hi guys, it's Tracy King, the bulletin board lady, and I am here to talk to you about my sub plans. Um, before we get started, just to tell you a little bit about myself, um, I blog at mrskingrocks.blogspot.com. Um, I also am on Twitter as at Tracy King. And I am on Instagram as the Bulletin Board Lady. I'm all over the place. I'm usually either the Bulletin Board Lady or Tracy King at all of the big social media spots. Um, I'm also in Teachers Pay Teachers as the Bulletin Board Lady Tracy King. And if you go to the bulletinboardlady.com, you'll be able to see all of my products. And there's a link to my blog there and some other social media links to um, to keep you connected. So whether you're um, watching us live or you're watching the replay, I'm so glad that you're here. Um, I have had kind of a mixed experience with um, substitute teachers. Sometimes they call them guest teachers. And um, I'm here to tell a few of my stories about that and to share with you my sub box. I brought it, it's here, my whole sub tub. And I'm gonna show you what's in it and I'm gonna show you how I've set my lesson plans up as we go through the night. So the plans that we're talking about tonight or that I'm gonna show you tonight are all like emergency sub plans or sub plans that um, maybe I, I could come in for about 10 minutes in the morning and plop this tub on the desk, that kind of thing. So if I know I'm gonna be out or if I know that I'm gonna be out for an extended time, like maybe a week or so, I'll um, usually type out more specific plans but I found that when I set my sub tub up like this one time at the beginning of the year, I can go all year long and not have to touch it. Maybe um, sometimes make a few copies or something like that, but it's really just kind of takes care of all of that myself. And that really makes me um, pretty happy about having to call in if a kid gets sick or something and knowing that my tub is ready to go. And even if it's not quite following what the other classes in that same grade level are doing, it is going to be something that, that I can check back over and that I could still grade if I need to grade and that kind of thing. So um, let's talk about good subs first. Good subs in the music room. Okay, you've had some, right? Me too. Um, a good sub in the music room would be able to follow plans. And I don't say that to be mean, but I mean, if I've taken the time to write up these plans and to get it all out there, I think that my substitute teachers should be able to follow the plans. I'm always as kind as they can be. I never have them dance or sing by themselves or anything unless they've talked to me and said, hey, I'm musical, I'm gonna bring my guitar, what can we do? <laughs> so um, I hope that they would follow the plans that I leave for them. Another characteristic that a good sub should have is that they should be familiar with the technology that the school uses. And by technology, I mean, yeah, they should be able to turn on a computer and log in either with um, the sub login, my district has one of those, or with mine if I leave it. They should be able to work a TV and a VCR and understand how to turn the smart board on and off. So, hi guys. So, I'm saying that because I don't always get a sub that can do that. So I think that they should be able to follow plans and they should be familiar with technology that's gonna be in the building. Um, I also think that it would be helpful if they had a little bit of experience or a little bit of training in classroom management. Just a few um, tricks of the trade about, you know, how do we line up and how do we calm down a class and how do we get attention and I mean, just some, some simple things I think. I think that a sub should be able to do. Um, I don't think that my current district nor any of my former districts have actually had that kind of training for their substitute teachers, but I think it would be beneficial. Another characteristic that I would love to have in the music room, I would love to have a musical sub. And 
I don't always get that. And I understand that there just aren't, you know, really we're lucky to have substitute teachers at all because it's, I think, one of the hardest jobs in education. I really, really do. So I am thankful. But in a perfect world, I would want my sub to be able to sing and maybe read music, play some kind of an instrument, and feel comfortable leading some musical activities. But that doesn't always happen. Um, I was very thankful. I had a long-term sub last year, and she was I mean, she was a former science teacher, and she was amazing. Just to go get her, she solved problems before they ever became problems. She was so diligent with taking grades and notes, and when she had to be out, she made sub plans for the sub for the sub, and she was really just amazing. And I have worked with several amazing guest teachers. Um, but I've also worked with some that I'm just not sure what they were doing or if their 60 or 70 bucks a day or something like that was really worth it. Um, in another district, I taught computers and music, and which is an awesome combination, by the way. And so um, in the morning, I would have music classes. In the afternoon, I would have computers or vice versa, something like that. And I had left. I had typed out detailed plans so that these classes could stay up with the other ones. And most of it just like the music plans required um, turning on the TV and working the VCR and the computer plans really just meant turning on the computer to show the students something on the projector. And I should have saved the note. I threw it away. But the note, the note said, I couldn't figure out how to get anything on. So I took all of your classes out for an extra recess. Oy, that was not what I wanted to happen. Um, and I really thought that I had made it as easy as I could. But no, nothing happened in music but recess, and that was just the TV. And nothing happened in computers, even though the kids could have done everything, even if she didn't turn the computer on. Wow. <laughs> so since that day... I've been a little bit more careful about how I plan. And although I want to leave incredibly musical activities, I also have to balance that with what I know a non-musical sub would do. Because I have some fabulous subs that just don't want to sing or don't know an instrument. And I have some that, although they're, they're not they don't consider themselves musical, are just willing to try anything. So I put all of my plans in a big tub called my sub tub. I think I've shown that to you here. And inside of it are videos and um, children's books to read. There are worksheets and activities. And all of that works all year long. Currently, I'm teaching third, fourth, and fifth grade. And so all of the things that I'm going to share with you tonight are third, fourth, and fifth grade centered, but they could be adapted for second grade. And I know that some people have adapted this for sixth, seventh, and eighth grade too. That might take a little, a little bit more um, work to modify some of this to make it a little bit more challenging for that group. But let's get in. I've been talking enough already. So, um, this is, I know it's backwards. I'm going to flip you around in just a minute. Okay. This is my sub plan binder and this is the cover is just, it's out of one of those, um, binder sets that I have in my store or you can make your own PowerPoint or whatever. And, um, I keep this in a very prominent place right behind my desk so that it is very obvious to see. And then my tub sits down on the shelf right underneath it. So, um, when they come into the room, it should be pretty obvious obvious if they've made it to my desk where it is. And in this binder, I keep um, general instructions like um, where to find stuff. Where are the pencils? Where are the Kleenex? Um, where if we need the erasers? Are there batteries for the remote? Um, where is the attendance book? Where are the, um, the emergency first aid kit? What do we do in case of an emergency? All of that is kept in this binder. And um, as they have time, my schedule allows about 20 or 25 minutes or so before school starts um, that they'll have time 
time to read through some of the instructions. I've also put in here um, how to work the CD player, although it can be, and I play mine through the computer. I also have a separate CD player, so if something would go wrong with the computer, they could um, connect the other CD player up so that they were still able to do the plans that I have left. So I'm gonna open this up. And I think the best way for me to do this is to flip the camera around and then I'll kind of talk behind that as I'm showing you what's in the book real quick. So if you have any questions, there's always a delay with Facebook Live, but if you have any questions, go ahead and type them out. And if I don't see them or if we're way past that, I'll come back after the video, after I've um, published it on the replay and I will make sure that I answer all of the questions that you might have. All right, so let's flip the puppy around. Okay, so this is just saying that if I have, um, if I know I'm going to be out, I'm going to leave plans that aren't these. And if I don't know that I'm going to be out or it's something where I'm called away quickly, that the sub tub has all the plans in it. This is how to use the sub tub, and I've already talked to you a little bit about that. What I want them to do is to see what classes are coming. I've included the schedule here, and then to choose what activities they think they'll be most comfortable doing. And then once they have chosen those activities, all the supplies are in the sub tub. So that was my room layout and my music schedule. This, you probably have something similar, just talks about what kind of duties you have. And ah, I said duty. <laughs> um, how to take attendance, because um, attendance is part of how I record grades. So I wanna make sure that I get that information down correctly. This is what we talked about before, about where is it, where can they find it in the room, um, what to do in case of an emergency. Um, this is a map of my school. I'm getting a little bit of glare there, aren't I? Stop it, focus! So a map of the school. Um, some helpful people are on this page. I've highlighted, maybe I need to go back. Are you guys seeing that glare, isn't that crazy? Um, some helpful people, um, some that are next door, some that um, may be down the hall that would be great to help answer any questions that my big fat binder um, hasn't answered already. Then start the activities. So in the activities, I have um, regular plans for like worksheets and read and answer and those kind of activities. Then let me see if I can do this without the glare. And so I have those all just listed in here. I'll show you the first one because it's pretty much how they're all done. So I'll say color by count and the grade levels that they can use them for. Although honestly, they could probably use all of my plans for any of the grades. These are just the grades that I prefer that they use them. And then the materials that they'll need and then what to do. So this is in for this activity. And on the next page, is my favorite part of the sub tub cleaning system is a tracking sheet. So it, let's say I'm gone one day next week and two days in October and I sit down to plan for an absence in November and I'll think well what you know what have the other classes done while I've been gone. So this has the sub go if they choose to do the color by count activity has them go in and put what grade they did what the homeroom teacher's name was the date and then their name so I'll know how all of that plays out. So here's one that was done by my awesome sub that I had last year. So they just filled all of that in and left me some notes about what had happened or if they got it finished or they didn't get it finished. So every activity that's in the sub tub has one of these tracking sheets because even if I'm gone two days in a row, if I have two different subs, one may choose to do videos, the other may do, you choose to do children's literature based lessons. Um, so it's really, it's really been helpful to me. So those are activities. Then I have um, videos. I, I don't always love leaving videos, but I know that for some subs, that's really what they're comfortable with. And so I wanna make sure that there's something um, that will benefit the kiddos there. So all of these videos are in the sub tub as well, and I'll show you what those are in just a bit. Then 
I just, I've been using children's books in music class for a bajillion years, but I haven't always um, had the plans prettied up enough to leave for sub plans. So sometimes they were just kind of hodgepodge of sticky notes in the book that, that I would plan to do. But I kind of polished those up and they'll be out in my store um, sometime this week. I'm going to put all this in a blog post too and I'll have the... Um, the children's lit things that we're going to talk about tonight in um, the store there. So those are the three categories. I have like the videos, the worksheets that they can do, um, the, oops, excuse me, let me turn myself here. I have the, um, oh, maybe I can turn myself around. Um, I have the videos that they can do. I have the worksheets. I have the children's books that they could also do. And then, um, I also leave Music Express sometimes. There'll be um, times when the listening lessons and stuff in there, it's so, so, so easy and already laid out that I can leave those plans as well. And sometimes if we've been playing a pretty simple game that I think that um, the sub would be able to follow, I might leave that too and maybe have some student leaders or something that might do that. So that was the binder where I keep all the information next to the sub tub that we're running up through next. So I'm gonna flip you around again so that you can see right inside. Oh, you get to see right inside my nose. That's pretty, huh? Okay, so inside the sub tub, I have um, videos that they can choose from. Yes, VHS, am I not retro cool or what? Um, <laughs> so I have, for third grade, I have the Marvelous Musical Mansion DVD. I know, there's probably only like 10 of those in the world or something, but I've got one. Stomp is um, a great one to use for all grade levels. The Bugs Bunny Overture to Disasters. Oh my gosh, how much I love this one. And the kids do too. So um, this one only takes about 30 minutes, so we usually have to do something else with that, that plan. This is the Magic School Bus Inside the Haunted House. Um, for a while, I think some of these were available on Netflix, maybe, or maybe on um, Amazon. But um, I have the VHS copy in my box at school, and it comes with an accompanying worksheet um, that is not mine. It was actually shared on the Music K8 discussion list many, many, many years ago. And these are just quick questions about the um, video that they can answer as they watch the video. And then the last one that's in there is the Music and Heroes of America. This one um, won't last the entire period. I see my kids for 50 minutes, but um, it has a lot of great things to discuss afterwards as well. So with the videos, except for the Magic School Bus one, the instructions in the, the um, sub binder are just watch the video. <laughs> so that goes pretty easy. All right, so those are those worksheets. Then, unless I'm making a mess here, um, I'll show you some of my children's literature things. This is Tubby the Tuba. Um, I loved this video, Tubby the Tuba, but I think I like the book even more. The video to me seemed to be so stinking long. Oh my gosh. So here's the book for Tubby the Tuba. And I just pop it in the folder in the sub tub. And I have two worksheets that go along with it. The first one is uh, just simply color the orchestra. So you're gonna color like the instrument families, different colors. And then there is a word search. Oh, focus on the back. So after they've gone through the Tubby the Tuba story, then they can do those worksheets there and lead in some discussion. This particular one comes with a CD. And so to listen to it takes about, I want to say 15, 17 minutes, something like that. But it's really nice to hear the voices and super awesome to have the music in the background um, for this story. And this one I have um, planned just to use with third grade, um, but I think this would be a great one that you could use with second grade and maybe even younger. The next literature um, plan that I have is for the word collector. 
and this was a pretty new book to me. It's from um, Peter H. Reynolds, and it has pretty much nothing to do with music. <laughs> I mean, there's a there are a few reference musical references in there, but but mostly it doesn't. It's about Jerome who collects words, and then after they've gone through the book and talked about it for a little bit, then um, this worksheet asks them to walk around the music room and to write down some of the musical words that they see around the room, which I think is a great way to kind of get them moving and staying focused and yet still doing something vaguely musical. Now my music room is really text rich. Um, I have like uh, the tempo posters up with definitions and dynamics. I have an instrument word wall type set up. And I, so it's really text rich. So for my classroom, this is pretty easy for them to do. Some of the words would be defined for them. In other words, they would have to come up with their own definition. And then um, the sub plans in here are to read the book, to do the word walk and walk around and collect the words. And then to come back and discuss it. So we wouldn't answer, or we wouldn't hear every word and every definition of every kid that that did it, but we would kind of get a nice sampling and talk about those words and then collect the papers. So we wouldn't really spend tons of time nor would we grade any of that. And then another activity with that is the syllable sort. If you've purchased any of my, um, worksheet sets or the endless bundle of worksheets, then you probably have seen these. These just ask the kiddos to take um, words um, in the worksheet sets. They're from a season or a holiday or something like that. But in here, they're actual words from the book and to sort them by syllables into the rhythm patterns that would most closely match with those. So like collector would be ti ti ta well, are close to TT talk. <laughs> so that's another activity that they can do. And I also include um, the answer keys in my folder whenever I remember to, because that also makes my subs happy and want to come back. Um, the next literature activity that I have is for Moses Goes to a Concert. Wow. I love this book and I've never had, I guess I've just never utilized it as much as I wanted to. Moses Goes to a Concert is a story about a class of deaf students that go to a concert and get to experience that in unique ways. Um, the set that I'm putting out this week has um, a few short questions about it. And then it also has the ASL alphabet the manual alphabet so that students can practice signing their name um, with a friend or signing songs or other things like that. So if you're not familiar with Moses Goes to a Concert, it's by Isaac Millman. And oh my gosh, I'll show you just a couple of pages in the book. As the story is going along, you can see um, the pictures for um, some of the signs. So there are simple sentences that they sign that go along with the story. Super, super, super awesome. So this one I'm leaving for third, fourth, and fifth grade because I really think that even my fifth graders would totally get into that. The other, I don't have this book here and I am not sure why, probably because I was going Facebook Live and it was a good opportunity to not have the book. <laughs> but this one is for The Remarkable Farkle McBride by John Lithgow. And I love this story and I love the video of him reading it himself so dramatically. So this is a writing prompt that goes after we've read the book and after we've watched um, John uh, read the book himself and it asks students to uh, choose an instrument that they might like to play and then to draw and write about it and there are a few lines at the bottom and then the other side talks about onomatopoeias so you know in the story there are, you know flip flop wriggle lop or whatever the, the musical sounds that are in there so we talk about what an onomatopoeia is and as they're listening to the story the second time they'll write down some of those that each of these instruments made so that's a great language arts tie-in too sorry about dumped my tub over the next book is so beautiful it is called The Rocket's Red Glare. 
and this is by Peter Alderman, I think. And such beautiful illustrations in this book. This is actually something that my fourth and fifth graders would really, really enjoy. And I think that I've left it for um, all sorts of, um, all, all different grades that I have left it for. Sorry, I get a text there and was so distracted. <laughs> so the instructions for the sub and this beautiful book are to read through the book with the class. Um, and to talk about the etiquette for the Star Spangled Banner and what we do whenever um, we listen to it or whenever it's performed or when we're performing, how we show respect by standing and putting our right hand on our heart and our eyes on the flag. And then I knew that tub would fall over. And then they're going to illustrate the Star Spangled Banner. So this is a coloring activity and there are nine different pages with the it all broken up so that, you know, one kid will get, oh, say, can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's less gleaming. And another one might get and the rocket's red glare and another one might get and the home of the brave. So um, just a really fun activity that turns into a beautiful, beautiful wall display. Um, I would think this same kind of activity would work with other Star Spangled books. I just love this one because the illustrations are so beautiful and it tells the story in an interesting way. So that was my pick for putting this in here. I actually have a couple other books that it could work with, but I liked that one the best. So then the rest of the activities that are left are all worksheet activities. So there's spin, draw, and clap. Spin, draw, and clap requires students have a paper clip and they spin the spinner, write whatever it lands on in the blank, and then they clap it as they go all the way through. They're making this big, long rhythm comp composition. And then they can clap it with each other and share papers with each other and um, uh, pull out ostinatos and things like that. And the students are pretty familiar with this, so it's pretty easy for the subs to do. Those come from my um, worksheet sets or from the Endless Worksheet Bundle. I'll try to link that whenever the video is finished. This, you see, I kind of have a cheat sheet on here because when uh, a sub uses this at the beginning of the year, I'm pretty sure my fourth graders have forgot every single thing I've taught them the year before and third grade have forgotten every single thing our second grade teacher has taught them before. So the cheat sheet helps. These again are more worksheets out of the worksheet bundles that I have and these just have students count up the counts and color them the appropriate color. So this is kind of fun for students to do. I usually have one on each side. I think these specific pages are probably from the summer set or the back to school set. So this is a great way for them to practice and to get to color because I just don't think kids get to color enough anymore. All right, this one, um, these are pitch worksheets. Again, from the worksheet bundles. They are double-sided, so they have two pages to do. Um, I've also included a little cheat sheet. Again, if they do them at the beginning of the year or the end of the year, will change how successful they are. So I wanna make sure that, you know, they've got something to refer to if they don't know. All right, one more worksheet, and then I have instrument investigations. This is a syllable sort. Oh yeah, this is what I was talking about with the, um, the other set. It just takes words in like a category, and then you divide them by the rhythm, and there are a couple pages of those to do too. And if the kids get finished early, they can always um, go back and color their pictures. Okay, so I don't know where to get this anymore. And so if you know, I would love for you to link me up. This is called the Discovery Series, Discover the Instruments of the Orchestra, 24 Posters and Fun Facts. This is by Hal Leonard. Is there an ISBN number back here? All right, that's what the back says. I guess not. But this is such a cool resource. These posters, they're letter size. On the back of them, they have a ton of information about the instrument or instruments that are pictured on the front. And so this is kind of like um, instrument research for the kiddos without the need for technology, which sometimes subs are um, great with or not at all great with. So what they do with this is um, each of these 
cards gets passed out to students and then they fill out these little sheets called instrument investigation and they're really really simple I don't know if these are in my store or on my blog or I don't know if they're out there or not if not I will post them because there's there's just not much to it investigators in this group so you'd write your your partner's name down the instrument that you're going to tell us about the instrument belongs to what family um, what vibrates on this instrument or instruments to make sound and another fact about this instrument so then what the kiddos do is they um sit with their partner and they talk about all of these details and get that all sorry i'm gonna get me less crooked um they're going to um put all that information on the sheet and then before they leave class for the day they're each gonna stand their group's gonna stand up and they're going to give like kind of like an oral report it's so small though it's really much more like kind of um, a thumbnail sketch but it gives them opportunity to learn very specifically about one instrument and then to share that with the class and the instrument investigation activity usually does take the um the whole time that we're in there now if you didn't have this how leonard set which seriously i don't know where to get them but oh my gosh um if um, you didn't want to do that, you could always, um, uh, if you have textbooks, there's often like a little page, um, sometimes, I don't know, four or five in a textbook about different instruments that are highlighted. You could also um, print out sheets. You could go to um, some websites yourself and just print out the information that they would need, and they could do that same kind of activity. Um, although it's not a very musical activity, it is an activity about music, and I really, I've actually taught it as a really classroom lesson um, not just for a sub plan but the last time that I left this for a sub I got such a raving review from the sub about how engaged they were and how well um, that they spoke at the end of class that I thought wow I maybe maybe this could be a great lesson for the sub tub itself so that's all with the exception of a box of paper clips that I keep in there for the spin, spin, clap and draw worksheet. That is all that is in my sub tub. It is all empty. And like I said at the beginning of the video, I set this up at the beginning of the year and I make sure the binder's there. I must admit it takes a couple hours to put it all together, but once that's happened, then I don't, I don't have to touch it for the rest of the year. Literally, the only time I touch it is when I take it off the shelf and plop it on the middle of my desk if I know I'm gonna be out the next day. So it's really, really, really saved me a ton of time and a ton of worry about, oh, did I put this in? And did I tell them where to find this? And, and all of that. So it's really, really helped me out. Especially, you know, last year I was out so many times and for so long and back and then out again that I really was thankful to have uh, this kind of setup that could be used over and over and over without the kids um, just watching a video or you know extra recess or <laughs> or whatever that she, I don't know what she was thinking <laughs> but if you have any questions about what is in my um, sub tub or like I said if you know where I can find that how Leonard set I will totally link that up as well um, you can check out the blog post about this very topic a little bit later this week where I'll have all the links and I'll give you a few more ideas of things that I leave for subs. I like to leave musicals, but not just musicals, just the video. I like to leave some worksheets and I have um, tons of worksheets and follow alongs and activities for musicals in my store that are fabulous for subs. And my principals usually like those too because they're really keeping engaged with that. Um, as the year goes on, I'll even leave workstations for my kiddos to do once we've kind of learned the pattern and learned appropriate behavior and they've learned a few of the stations that, you know, they have them under their belt because they're so engaged during station time as well that they're, you know, pretty good behavior for the sub. So I hope that you enjoyed taking a peek into my sub tub and I hope that you'll check out that blog post later this week and I'll post on Facebook when I get the um, five children's literature 
plans for a non-musical sub. Maybe tonight, maybe tomorrow I'll get those up. So be sure to check those out. And I will see you in a couple of weeks for another Tracy talk and hope that you have a fabulous week.